Hey everyone, and welcome to the Finding the Hidden Profit in Your MSP webinar. I'm really excited to share the stage with, with Matt from B Castle for the next 30 minutes. Um, our goal in this session is to help you think about some changes and conversations that should be had within your MSP that can pick up simple profit very, very quickly. Okay, in terms of the speakers on this call today, uh, my name is Adam Ross and I'm one of the co-founders of a company called Cloud Olive, um, headquartered out of, out of Australia. And my background to Cloud Olive was actually working at Autotask um, for a really long time, from 2011 for eight or nine years and Datto for a few years when the merger happened. And the, the, the key question that our partners were asking us at that time was so how does everybody else manage all the license fluctuations across all the vendors and distributors that we work with it's hard there must be a solution and there wasn't okay so my co-founder and i three and a half four years ago we set out to solve that very broad problem area today we aim to distill down a a couple of key key patterns that we see time and time again that is impacting the margin within msps matt over to yourself yeah, thanks, Adam. Uh, hi, everyone. Matt Campion, uh, Head of Products and Go-To-Market at Beecastle. Uh, my experience, 20-odd uh, years of experience in CRM and account management, um, previously with Salesforce uh, in US and Australia, uh, and also with uh, Deloitte Digital. Um, Beecastle really helps you understand your relationships, increase your revenue, and grow your profits. And the business started really from um, our founder, um, David Wood, in the financial services industry, we're looking at the relationships and digging deeper into the secret source behind successful relationships and then scaling that. So that data-driven approach to account management is really what we help account managers on a day-to-day -day basis uh, know who to call, what to talk about, which products to talk about, and really the opportunities to go after. So yeah, excited to uh, talk about some some great topics, super relevant uh, for today as well uh, with Adam today. Let's get into it. In terms of the, the, the key takeaways, if you think about it, we've been um, in the MSP space for, for myself, maybe 14, 15, Matt, for, for a really long time as well. And like when you're doing a startup looking to solve a very specific yet broad problem, you just you obsess on all the different problem areas that all the partners are, um, are, are somewhat thrown at you. And, and the, the two key areas that we see over and over again is creating a logical data structure of some description, okay? There are massive flow on benefits. And, and if you question whether or not you have um, set up your PSA, and when we say PSA, it's typically Auditask, ConnectWise, the halos of the world. Um, that have you ever wondered if that's been set up in the right way? Is it scalable? Um, and when it when things are scalable, it often means that it's well thought out and it's often simple, okay? We will be sharing some very specific considerations um, that, you can, that you can think about. When the data structures are correct, and the data structures we're talking about here are definitely construct of the PSA and the, the tables and the services and all the rest. Um, but also the way that you're actually billing your clients as well. They have a material impact when they're, when they're bound together. And when you have accurate um, data structures or, or, or more well thought out data structures that align to your customers, your MSP, the focused activity that can be driven through, um, well, mainly the account management and sales team and admin finance teams is massive, massive, massive. Like if you think back, RMM and like monitoring systems and ticketing systems, they're extremely mature um, markets now and everyone's got one or got, um, got something in place. Like technician efficiency has been really well thought out over the last 10 to 15 years. And now there's a, a massive investment over the last three to four years. And, and it's, where, it's where money can be made inside the MSP through um, efficiency in other departments. Mainly today, we'll be talking about account management sales, so client lifecycle, and of course, the, the billing admin finance teams. And look, just, just leading on from, you know, what Adam's saying there, sort of those couple of key takeaways, they really um, uh, uh, 
the illuminated and sort of the highlights of today's uh, discussion, right? So we will be talking about really selling it right. And then as that flows through, building it right from the technical, um, sorry, at a not from a technical, but from a data perspective and the outcomes of what that means from a business perspective. So look, from both of our organizations, you know, we, on the Beecastle side, uh, we've seen some really material results with our customers, increase in meetings, thousands of dollars in new opportunities, and that flows through to revenue uplift. And then I know on the on the Cloud Olive side as well, Adam, you've seen some really outstanding results as well. Do you want to just talk through some of the flow on effects of when the billing is done really well? Yeah, it, and every MSP has a different starting point when we're having a conversation and some find this um, the problem they're having is they're worried that what they're getting billed from their suppliers isn't going out the door. Um, others are getting lots of questions back from their um, from their customers based on like a number of different different challenges. But some overarching um, bets that we would put money on now is if you're doing things manually, meaning you're taking a distributor file, vendor file, yeah, and you're cross referencing that to your audit task or connect was on a monthly basis. For every 100 lines you're doing that for, five will not be getting billed out. And in the next handful of slides, when we talk through data structures, we'll actually discuss why that actually occurs and what can be thought about doing it. But um, as I mentioned before, RMM ticketing, a huge amount of investment. Mm -hmm. um, now you, you're, you're going to really see you'll be able to do a lot more with fewer people um, and drive much more scalability um, over the over the coming years. Um, you're right. This space is really moving um, up the maturity curve, account management, all the way through to the end-to-end -end billing. It's really, it's really come a long way in a short amount of time. Very much so. <clears throat> so in terms of just to give you an idea of everyone loves loves a, a, a group of logos. Um, so Cloud Olive's main purpose is we will centralize any supplier that you are reselling via your MSP, any distributor, any vendor. Um, and when it's all centralized and in one place, um, we want to make it very easy for the team to be able to see where you're overbilling, where you're underbilling, and then make the adjustments within your audit task or connect wise and move on. Okay. Very simply, but we will go into this in a little bit more detail shortly. Look, from a, a Beecastle perspective, we help you with a number of problems and we know we know that account management, you're uh, often pulling data from multiple different systems, you know, um, life in Excel, um, you know, data fragmentation. Um, so what Beecastle does is we pull data in from M365 and Relationship Keeper, help you better understand who you're meeting with and who you need to meet with. Whitespace, which we'll talk a little bit about further. Um, so it gives you the ability to see all those opportunities within your existing client base already. Um, of which, you know, there is a lot of revenue there that can be um, really found quite quickly. And then all the way through the life cycle, through so opportunities, um, revenue. Again, the pain points that we really help uh, account managers here is really one pane of glass. So instead of having to go to multiple different systems, you save time by getting deep insights in one platform. Um, and that sort of leads us into uh, the next um, sort of discussion around how important uh, data is. So, um, Adam, do you mind just sort of sharing, you know, you guys are deep in billing, um, you know, data is such a key part of it. What are some of the things that you've learned um, from um, your customers and some of the key takeaways that some of the uh, listeners uh, yeah, can I, I really like, think about? Yeah, I feel like we've earned our MSP billing PhD over the last handful of years. And um, as we've, as we've understood, began to understand this really, really deeply. Um, and also 10 years at Autotask, right? Seeing PSAs either set up well or not. And when they are set up well, they're amazing systems. When they're not, they're very big and clunky and difficult. And often people will be jumping around. Um, one, of the, one of the reasons why that's a difficult, well, not just that system, but it's a big system to implement and, and get right, is we found that a lot of MSPs will actually um, they will move ahead with a, a, a PSA of some description and just start implementing it before they look at the way in which their vendors are actually sh um, sending them their data, where, how the invoices are coming in, the time of the month that they come in, are they billing in advance or in arrears? And 
to help you understand when we now we've got a really thoughtful methodical process to help new msps understand the pros and cons of their current data structures okay and if you just think through some of the questions we ask as we're um getting to understand we we know pretty quickly how um how well a a system has been thought out and 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 built so it's like are you building in advance arrears or current month are you bundling services together are you splitting services out do you have edge cases where mm. one tenant needs to go to multiple places the 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 more of the the further away an msp is selling compared to the way they're buying these services the more complexity that will naturally occur okay that being said regardless of the decisions made or the way things have been sold via the um, sales team or, or just over time um, there's some consistencies that you really want to just consider okay and a really big one probably the biggest one of all is the service naming conventions that you go with within your um, within your business yeah okay um, having that well thought out and like one of the challenges everyone will face in the MSP world, if they, um, if they, an example, real world example, we had a client who was now a combination of a few MSPs that have sort of merged and been acquired. And they had one vendor, one service inside um, their connect was it was, or one product called yep. antivirus, but all of the four different MSPs that they had just acquired all had their own antivirus products. So all of a sudden when the management team were trying to decommission and or report on it, it became near on impossible. Yeah. So um, naming conventions in that sense will, um, will literally solve any future friction that will occur. And if you can be thinking about these things from a service naming convention um, convention, a, contract or agreement naming convention yeah and even thirdly and probably third in level importance is having the company names very closely aligned between or identical ideally between a source of truth hopefully your psa and then all the different 10 to 15 to 20 different suppliers that you're actually working with when those are in place and it's really just simple right if you just do the naming conventions in a, in a really succinct manner it's it's logical for a, a new team member to come on and just run with the ball okay there's no there's no real complexity ar around that um what so are some of the benefits the, the psa setup side the other the other um data structure which doesn't seem to have the right level of consistency across all the msps we're speaking or majority of the msps we're speaking with is actually what do you define as your source of truth okay so the future of this of billing within MSPs, um, I suppose a lot of people have tried it in terms of user-based billing, device-based billing, site-based billing. A, a problem with that is, or not even a problem, but a, a challenge that a lot of people have is that they don't define the source of truth for that. So if it's Microsoft certain license types, that's fine. If it's RMM from a device perspective, also fine. And then if it's some other, I don't know, a, a data device or something else from a site perspective, um, really trying to understand what your source of truth is and trying to standardize and pick one that the whole team company gets behind for a period of time will materially make things easier as well across across the board um so that's that's that they're just some um items that we've seen matt what have you seen from um from the b castle side in in data structures yeah look um pretty pretty similar um, type of things in terms of the the root cause. So um, we would have product a product catalog and not just the naming conventions like you've said, but then there's a sort of a categorization which categories um, or bundles do those products or services go into. And why that is important is because that's got flow on effects. So we'll see in a second in, in white space, it comes back to sort of the buckets that you want to um, drill down into the customers see that hey within security I've got these products okay or uh, within you know backup I've got these ones here so getting that source data right as it flows through has multiple benefits and flows through to reporting as well so when you're sitting at um, you know a monthly sales meeting or even at an executive level when you'll see product uh, or um, growth trends through different product categories you know that 
that product or that service is in the right bucket and that totally makes sense for the business. So yeah, there's, um, you know, enter once, use many times, that old sort of um, uh, adage for, for data has so many benefits uh, in this, uh, this instance as well. Adam, why don't you give us a couple of examples um, from from uh, Cloud Olive and you know the the material benefit um, that the outcomes of getting that data right? Yeah, no, I, I think also understanding how, like it takes a, the the billing reconciliation, the invoicing of clients is is not everybody's favorite time spent. <laughs> Not saying the nicest possible way. Um, Amazingly, though, only 14% of your vendors change on a monthly basis on average. So all of that time, all of that effort, all of that bled revenue, all of that, it comes down to a team or, a, or an individual um, um, spending all of that amount of effort to literally try and locate a very small subset of things mm -hmm. that have moved on a, um, on, a, on a monthly basis. And We've learned now that there are five areas per vendor that an MSP will run some form of billing risk, okay? Um, and when we very first launched and, and very first client gave us a shot out of New Zealand, it was a company called IT Partners. Um, we actually, they asked for an exception report. So before we had software, before anything else, we actually um, took a report from Auditask and their Sophos invoice is what it was. And we spent a really long time, it was 70 hours actually, seven zero hours to um, put into a Google doc and present back to him. And they first presentation back, they were like, Adam, this is so overwhelming, <laughs> the amount of data that you've just given us. And I went, okay, thanks for the feedback. What do you want to see? And they went, I want to see where we're underbilling our clients. And I was like, cool, that's the first bit of direct feedback that we've had, first client. So naturally, that is where we put what we put front and center per vendor. That's really the first fix up that you want to drive into and understand why are you now underbilling? Why why is there a risk of money leaving your bank account and not getting recouped profitably profitably by your um by your clients? Mm. Um, and human error can play a part in this, of course. Like quite often, a um I could go back to the every hundred lines that you're doing manually, five won't be getting on bill. Most like. Four out of those five will typically be the admin team has switched off the billing inside of Auditask or ConnectWise, and yeah. then the tech team hasn't got round to or followed a process. So that's just harder to decommission. But seeing that then drives everyone to quickly fix that as quickly as possible. Yeah, um, it's, it's seeing is believing, isn't it? The visualization just gives so many like aha moments of some things that might be missed, et cetera. A hundred percent. Yeah, a hundred percent. And like going back to the, the topic of this hidden profit, where can you be like shining the magnifying yeah. glass within your business to try and locate quick, easy growth opportunities? Um, and the the main one would be, or naturally the first one you'd want to do is going to have the biggest impact if there are issues, um, unit counts being off between any of your suppliers and what you're on billing. Naturally, that's going to be the biggest um, if, if there is an issue there. Um, not on billing a service could be technician forgot to switch something off could be account um the, mm. the and the finance team have switched it off within um within your billing system um and then the the next one and, and really really key like we see this as a secondary step during the implementation is working out is your margin line by line so we're looking at sort of this column here is your actual margin for this line item where you anticipated that to be um, mm. And the reason why that's so tricky at the moment is if vendors increase their costs and especially around Microsoft, NCE, different places in the world right now are getting their 9% increase in different areas, um, that it's very difficult to see this information um, and seeing it once and then fixing it, awesome. But then trying to see when your vendors change their cost on you in month one, not month 10, Again, much easier to have that conversation with the client. Adam, it looks like it, it sounds as if you're not only saving time, but you're 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 finding things that were unknown before, like the unknown unknowns. Yeah, definitely. This is very hard to find very specific information that's um everyone wants it for sure. Very difficult to get this across every single one of your suppliers on a um on a periodic basis, typically, typically monthly. Very difficult. Yeah. Um, so absolutely for sure. 
and it leads us on to the, the next um the next point which um when we were when i was at what do you tell us we were acquired by a um a, a really successful really big private equity firm called vista equity partners um and they have the standard operating procedures. Their whole model is by growing software companies, increase the enterprise value and then um, have an exit at some point. So there's like some similarities certainly to the the drivers of MSP owners. Mm. Um, and what, what one of their operating procedures, they had about 80 or so at the time, probably more these days, but they had something called a cap DB, which was client and prospect database. Okay. And that was one of the first things that they came in and would implement into into our, into the businesses they acquire, and what they're really trying to do there is they grade your current customer base in terms of future opportunity. Where are the cross sell opportunities? Where are your A B C D style of clients? And then where should you really be investing? It's always going to be the um, 80 20 rule of it. Where should the entire organization focus 80 percent in terms of the 20 percent of the client base? And when we, um, when like over the last six to 12 months, we've just been hearing so much about B Castle and them really solving this problem at scale for MSPs. I was like, we have to do a webinar <laughs> together and, <laughs> and talk through it. It's a big problem in any, any company that has more than one product that they can go and sell. So, Matt, I'll probably, I'll put it over to yourself yeah. to, be able to talk through what, what, what you do and how, um, what you've learned along the way. Yeah. Look, Adam, that's a really good, that's a really good leading story because I think that it's such a common problem for MSPs. Um, what we're looking at here is our white space um, module. Um, I was lucky enough to go to the ConnectWise um, IT Nation in Orlando last year. Um, we'll be going again this year as well. Um, and you know, hopefully might meet some of our uh, US friends over there as well. And you know, I spoke to probably over 300 people in three days and so many people have said, I've tried to build a white space matrix in Excel and it either blew up, uh, I broke it, or it, it just gets continually out of date very, very quickly. So um, the problem that we're solving here is just finding those opportunities that are, are really sometimes no brainers um, that previously that you couldn't see that were hidden now just become, you know, quite um, illuminated for you. The color coding we're looking at here is, you know, similar to Cloud Olive with a bunch of um, intelligence in the background. Bicosol has, um, you know, you know, similar intelligence, uh, just the, really the depth, but obviously in the context of white space and account management, the blue indicates that it's an active agreement. So that means, you know, th there's really no opportunity there. However, the white, shows that, for example, Freddy's Food Truck and uh, the Microsoft 365 E3, okay, they they don't have that. So that could be an upgrade opportunity. And likewise, if I go down to uh, Black Rooster, which is around um, halfway down the column um, of companies there, they don't have a Microsoft 365. Now, out of the... Op out of the options, you'll see that there's two cells there that are green, okay, for Black Rooster, Microsoft 365 Business and Office 365 E5. The green indicates that is a stronger recommendation than E3, okay? And that is based on similar spend with similar companies, okay? So if you th think about the pain of all the data you'd have to export to Excel and, and those type of things, this is just out of the box. Uh, and, and very Matt, just a quick question. Yeah. Like I can talk to when we were speaking with an MSP that um, we're now working with as well, that, and they touched on that they use you. And in the very first month when they just plugged this in, that they drove an extra $80,000, I think it was in terms of um, opportunity for sales reps to focus in on. Um, yeah. What typically happens when a new partner of yours plugs this in and sort of gets hit with information that they haven't seen in, in this light before? Yeah, look, that, you know, that's a very sort of common outcome. The best part, so the, the most common thing that we see is just embedding it because it's uh, essentially, it's, in, it's additive to your existing processes and complementary. So what we see is in a weekly set of activities for an account manager, they'll include this in their weekly account planning. So I'll plan my meetings, 
I'll look at my um, uh, perhaps QBRs or anything going on with my accounts. And additionally, I'll spend you know half an hour on a Monday looking at my white space, which is dynamic and updated, and I'll look and create opportunities from here, which then push back to the PSA. So I'm finding, I'm not going out cold, cold calling. It is just within your existing client base, you know, the, our customers are very easily able to add, as you said, thousands of dollars to the pipeline um, just by looking at it. So yeah, it's we're seeing some great outcomes um, you know, and people increasing the pipeline uh, in a really efficient way. It's a data-driven way. And then once they're through, then they're able within um, Beecastle, within able to manage those open opportunities. Again, it's the visualization. So the problem we're solving here is, um, you know, what's what's my pipeline? However, the 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 gradient of the green here. See the expected close in the bottom right hand corner. What we do is we make the user interface super simple, so we save people time and we get insights quicker. So if that was red. Uh, that would be over date, out of date. And also there's another column, which is uh, my last activity, uh, which shows, brings in my last activity from N365. And it, I suppose if we tie this back, Adam, back to sort of the, today's topic, selling it right and billing it right, what we are seeing in both our screens is just that flow on effect of getting that source data right and pulling it through. And then the insights and the actions um, and really the business outcomes that we can generate from that. Yeah, cool. We, Matt, we just had a um, question. Do you, it's, I guess it's for both, but do yep. do we help with the categorization, the um, sort of shining a uh, categorization of services and products in the setup? Yeah, we definitely do. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's a very common thing that we do with a lot of our customers in, in the onboarding phase as well. Um, they're able to, when you integrate uh, into Beecastle, you, you get um, a profit track, which is our free version. And you, we see a lot of the, the, the data in there and we're able to uh, make those changes. But yeah, we share a lot of best practices. Um, and just, just an outside, yeah, we, we actually asked for a report from either your audit task or ConnectWise and run some analysis with you before we start automating. The biggest thing we often find is, there's depending on how many people have had admin rights <laughs> over a period of time inside of your PSA, um, we, we aim to deduplicate um, services and products that don't need to be there anymore. Like as a very broad stroke, the fewer products and services you've got, the the better, like sort of retreat and then you can scale and, and, and grow as you need to. And one of the other things from a Cloud Olive perspective, if, if you're sort of questioning, I don't know my current state of what it really looks like, Google freemium Cloud Olive and just go through a, um, like self-serve, get started. It will just, it will return a um, all the recurring billing items out of your PSA margin per line. And it just has some really nice filtering capability and margin calculations that you can at least begin surfacing what's going on underneath. And then like naturally, it's just a far easier way to, to get data out of your audit task or connect wise and understand where you're, um, where you're at. But you can see the QR codes here. If, if either or both, Cloud Olive and Bcast are, are of interest, or you want to have a chat through your own um, requirements moving forward and needs, then just just book in. Would be it'd be really great to speak with you when the when the time is right. Excellent. Well, um, yeah, thanks, uh, thanks everyone, and um, you know we hope you got a couple of things out of today, and uh, hopefully we look forward to talking with you. Awesome. Thanks everyone. Thanks everyone. All right, so...